morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you once again for joining in with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. We thank and praise God for waking us up this morning. God gave us our health and our strength. We can move our hands. We can stomp our feet. We have a mind to come and praise God, and we just thank him for that. We thank God for keeping us and protecting us. Our scripture will come from Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and it reads, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which extends everything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I want to experience God's peace in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of everything that we're going through and all the injustices. We want to experience God's peace, not the world's peace, but God's peace. Our song this morning is the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh yes, right now. Help us sing, please. The Lord is blessing me right now.
Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. God, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. God, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to pray. We thank you, Father God, that when we pray, Father God, you hear us. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us to be able to get to you, to pray to you, to honor your name, your will, and your way. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We realize that we are unholy and you're holy. We realize, Father God, that we've not done the things that are pleasing in your sight. God, we ask you to forgive us in the name of Jesus. Bless our lives. Bless us as we come today, Father God, to hear your word. Bless that your word will fall on good soil, that men, women, boys, and girls will hear you and be a blessing to the kingdom. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless me as my, I stand to preach your word. Father God, that I will be humbled behind the cross of Jesus, that Jesus will stand, teach, and preach your word, that old habits will be rolled away, old burdens will be thrown away, and that we will be better at 12 o'clock than we were at 1030. We ask you to continue to bless us now. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. He woke us up this morning. And me on my way. The Lord. The Lord is blessing. The Lord is. Right now. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for another privilege another Sunday morning to come and worship Amen. and worship him. Amen. Let me call your attention to Proverbs chapter 9, verses 10 and 11. In the Old Testament, the book is Proverbs. The chapter is 9. The verses are 10 and 11. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Proverbs chapter 9 verses 10 and 11 from the New King James Version. When you found it, you will discover these words. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and your, the years of life will be added to you. The wise writer says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I want to talk about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. We look at this text, we find even today that men, women, boys, and girls need the fear of the Lord. Yes, fear, the fear of the Lord. This word fear is both reverence and dread. <laughs> yeah, this word fear is twofold. It is, first of all, it is reverence unto the Lord. And secondly, it is dread of the Lord. This word, this word fear means that we dread the Lord's wrath. Let me just tell you, God has a maintenance plan. And in his maintenance plan, sometimes he has to bring his wrath down on us. God, God has, has a maintenance plan. He doesn't throw us away. He doesn't discard us. But even when we don't do the right thing, God chastises us. The Bible teaches that when a, a man or a woman loves his child, he chastises them. He, he, he disciplines them. Yes, the Bible even says that he that does not discipline his child does not love his child. So we have to understand that when we look at who God is, we must have the fear of the Lord. Yes, I tell you today in the 21st century, many men, many women, many boys and girls do not fear the Lord. Yes, 
You can tell that they don't fear the Lord because, first of all, in God's maintenance plan, we would understand that God will chastise us and God's wrath will come upon us. In his maintenance plan, God has a way of blessing us, but God also has a way of disciplining us. When you do the things that you do in God's way, you will be blessed of the Lord. But when you do the things you want to do your own way, you will miss out on the blessings of God. When God says don't and you do, <laughs> there's a wrath of God that's coming close to you. When God says do and you choose not to do, the wrath of God is getting near to you. God is long-suffering. He put up with stuff a long time. But sometimes I think I get a picture of how mom and daddy used to do it back home. They say you are bruising, you are cruising for a bruising. They will say, all right now. And when they say, all right now, what they're saying is, I'm going to get you for old and for new. God has a plan. And God loves us. And he loves us in spite of us. He loves us in spite of our conditions. He loves us in spite of our meanness. He loves us regardless of who we are. God loves the criminals. God loves the saints. And God loves the ain'ts. God has a way of disciplining us that exemplifies his love. So when the fear of God is spoken of in this passage... In Proverbs chapter 9, verses 10 and 11, when you see that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. First of all, you have to understand that fear is, first of all, the dreadfulness of God. It is the fact that God, as the child would say, God's going to get you. <laughs> And it is, it is the opportunity for us to see God as a parent that, that instructs us. And when we don't do what the parent says, then you have a whipping coming. Then you have a conversation coming. Then you have some disciplinary words coming. And sometimes I'd rather have a whipping than to listen to all those words. But God has a wrath. That when we don't obey him, we find ourselves being cursed. Yes. Even though God loves us and God loves all of us, God wants to bless us as we obey, obey him. Mm -hmm. But we choose not to obey him. God has a cursing side. God will torment us. God will discipline us. And I know many have said that if God is such a good God, why would he allow these things to happen to me? Well, first of all, we, we find ourselves blaming God for things that we ought not blame him for. Yes. Also, we find ourselves blaming the devil. Uh, as Flip Wilson would say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> and now we're blaming coronavirus. I said to somebody the other day that the coronavirus, the devil, and God are blamed for everything these days. But the Bible says that when we move in the wrong direction, when we sin before God, we are led astray by our own fleshly desires and what we want to do. No pure pressure can make you do what you don't want to do. No person can convince you to do what you don't want to do. We have done what we have chosen to do, and God has a dreadful side. Mm -hmm. The bad news is God's going to get us. But also this word fear talks about the good news that we all, that we all look forward to. This word fear means that we must have a reverence for the majesticness of God. 
We must reverence God because he is almighty God. We must reverence God. We must adore him. We must reverence God. We must respect him. Yes. We must reverence God. We must honor him. And we must move according to God's word. When we trust him, we honor him. When we have faith in him, we seek to please him. Therefore, we must reverence God. When we reverence God, we obey him to such a point where when God moves, we move just like that. We have to get to a point where we feel God. When men feel God, they won't say anything. When, we, when men feel God, they won't just do anything. When men really feel God, they will watch their mouths. They will watch their actions. They will watch what they do and they'll watch how they act. Yes. We must have a fear of God, a respect for him that we will do what God would have us to do. And we will do it every single time. Yes. This word fear is a principle of the heart. We have to get our heart right. The Bible says that God is looking to and fro throughout the whole earth, trying to find somebody whose heart is turned toward his, whose heart is turned toward God. God is looking at your heart. You see men see you dressed up. Men see you on the outside, mm -hmm. but God sees your heart. That's right. God is looking at our hearts and, and our hearts ought to be of such that our hearts are fearful of God so much so that we respect him. Today, men, women, boys and girls don't have the respect that the old saints of old had. Saints of old would not contest God. Saints of old who, who stood firm before the Lord and they trusted him. When they didn't have, they trusted him. The text declares in Proverbs 9, verses 10 to 11, it declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This word beginning is not the same word we find the word beginning when in Genesis it says that in the beginning... God created heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. This word beginning means the first act. It means the first concession. It means the first thing that must happen. In other words, the beginning is the first act of grace. It's the first act of wisdom. It is that moment that a person is converted. It is that moment when a person comes to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is that moment when that person fall out with their evil ways and put their trust in the Lord. It is that moment when men begin to love God as they love themselves. It is that moment. This word beginning is that moment of repentance. Mm -hmm. So the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This word Lord here is the self-existing God. He is the great king God. He, he is the God that existed before there was a when or where. Let me tell you, if you're going to fear anybody, you ought to fear God. Amen. Too many people fear their bosses and they don't fear God. Too many people fear their neighbors and they don't fear God. Some men fear fear their wives, and they don't fear God. Mm -hmm. Let me just say to you today, sisters and brothers, if you're looking for a spouse, if you're considering a mate, you need to get you a mate that fears the Lord, someone that respects God, someone who loves the Lord, someone who has set aside their ways to fall out with those ways and fall in love with God. Right. Because if he or she loves God, it won't be a problem with loving you. Yes. It is the beginning of wisdom. It is the beginning of wisdom. It is the beginning of understanding. It is the beginning of the skill and the grace that God offers us. 
We talk about grace and we talk about how good God's grace is to us, but we need to understand that if it had not been for God's amazing grace, yes. we would not be where we are. We would not have what we have. We wouldn't be able to go where we go. We need to trust God because God can keep us. Yeah. You see, jobs will let you down. Employers will turn you off. Pink slips are readily available. But when it comes to God, he will always be there and always be on your side. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The knowledge of the Holy One, the discernment. This word knowledge means discernment. It means understanding. It is, it is what comes with the fear of the Lord. Wisdom is not only calling a court case, but wisdom in these verses is calling us to a feast. Wisdom is calling us to the feast and it is telling us to go out to the hedges and the highways and invite men, women, boys, and girls to come and sit down and be a part of wisdom. Yes, wisdom is calling us and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. When you fear the Lord, you gain knowledge of the Holy One. The Holy One here is the Godhead of the triune God. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is the knowledge of the Holy One that brings us understanding. It is the knowledge of the Holy One that brings us discernment. It is the knowledge of the Holy One, God Himself, the three divine persons in one. God is holy in his nature and God is holy in his words. God is holy in his words. And this word holy means to be sacred, to be set apart. We serve the holy God. He is set apart from any other God. Buddha doesn't compare to him. Confucius doesn't compare to him. Hinduism and their God do not compare to him. He is the Holy One. He is the triune God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you're going to have wisdom, if you're going to make wise decisions, if you're going to make decisions that are going to last you a lifetime, you need to have the fear of the Lord. If you don't have the fear, I say to you today, pray for the fear. Ask God for the fear. Let somebody teach you how to fear the Lord because God is to be feared because he is just as dreadful as he is compassionate. He is the dreadful God. He can bring on terror in a moment in this blinking of an eye. He can bring about terror, but he is the loving God. He is the God that keeps us, that blesses us, Regardless of what we're going through, someone would ask the question, Lord, why me? Why am I going through these things that I'm going through? Don't you know that God never sleeps nor slumbers? Yes. He is well aware of what you're going through. God sees everything you're thinking about. God sees everything you're headed to. The God that we serve is able to keep us in the midst of our mess. Amen. Oh, I can testify today that I should have been dead and gone. I've been some places. I've done some things. I've been with some people where I should have been dead and gone, but God's mercy came running and God did not allow justice to have his way. Thank God. Thank God that he blessed me in spite of me. And if you were to testify this morning, you can testify that God kept you when you were doing your thing. God kept you when, when you were doing your own thing, your own way. God kept you when you didn't obey him. We need to obey God. Proverbs 9, 10, and 11 declares that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. We have to teach our children. 
We have to teach them in such a way that they acknowledge God. Mm -hmm. We have to teach our children in such a way that they will honor God. We have to teach our children while they're young that they have to have a wholesome respect for the Lord himself. For without that wholesome respect at an early age, then we will find our children running wild and rapid. The Bible teaches that if you train up a child in the way he or she should go, when he's old, he will come back to it. When he's old, he won't turn away from it. He will always be kept by the Lord's grace and the Lord's mercy. Amen. Finally, verse number 11 says, Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 11. For by me, wisdom is speaking here. Wisdom says, for by me, days will be multiplied. And years of life will be added to you. If you want to live a long time. <laughs> Wisdom is saying, if you catch a hold to her, wisdom is saying, if you stick out with her, wisdom is saying, if you hang in there with her, then your days, then your days will be added to you. Mm -hmm. Don't you want some added days? Mm -hmm. Don't you want some more days to your life? The Bible says that the fear of knowledge is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me, wisdom says, your days will be multiplied. The word multiplied means to be great. Your days won't be just haphazard days. They, they don't, don't, won't be just days that you wake up and lay down, wake up and do your job, wake up and go to school, wake up and do, do your thing in the neighborhood, but it will be great days. Don't you want some great days? This word multiply means that these days will be great. And then this word multiply means that this, these days will be many. Mm -hmm. Thank God for many days. If I had listened to the false prophets, the false prophets declared that I would be dead before I got 16. But here I am at age 57. God has multiplied my days. And not only has he multiplied my days, he has given me great days. I declare to you, my latter days will be greater than my former days. This word multiply means many. It means much. It means numerous. Yet, thank God, not only will I have good quality days, not only will I have great days, if I obey wisdom, if I fear the Lord, not only will I have great days, I will also have many, much numerous days. Mm -hmm. This word multiply means that I'm going to have numerous days. My, my days shall be long. Mm -hmm. And let me just tell you, if I live not one single day after today, my days have been long. I've done funerals of, of two months old. I've done funerals of 11 months old. I have done funerals of two and three year old. God has multiplied, has, has made my days many, has made my days much. He has made my days numerous. Mm -hmm. And finally, this word multiply also means to store up. God is storing up some days for me. If I walk in wisdom, if I walk in the fear of the Lord, if I keep my knowledge on the Holy One, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, guess what's going to happen? He's going to store up some days for me. Thank God for storing up some days. Thank God for having some days in the vault for me. Thank God for having some days in storage for me. God is storing up some days for me. And not only are they stored up days, they're great days. Mm -hmm. They're days of ex excitement, days of influence, days that I can, I can please God even the more. It's a sad summation when God allows you to live a long time and you live a riotous life. You live an ungodly life. God have days that he's storing up for you, but you got to live those days like you love and fear Amen. the Lord. Finally, he says... Verse number 11, Proverbs chapter 9, he says, For by me, wisdom is speaking, for by me, your days will be multiplied. 
and your years of life will be added to you. Years will be added. Days will be multiplied and years will be added. Thank God. What he's saying is 365 to 366 days will be multiplied and they will be great days. And then he says, your years will be added unto you. He says, not only will they be great days, not only will they, will they be numerous days, not only will they be much days, not only will they be days that are stored up, they will be increased. This word increase means strong. This word increase means prolong. Mm -hmm. The word increase means more. Let me just share with you today. If you have fear of the Lord, your days, your days will be multiplied. If you have the fear of the Lord, your, your years will be added and increased. Yes. Let me just share with you today. Not only will your days and your years be multiplied and increased on planet Earth, when you have the fear of the Lord, your days and your, your years will be multiplied, increased, and added up after life on this side. Let me, let me just share with you today. Let me just share with you in my little speech today. Let me just share with you that your days on the other side will be much longer than you live on this side. I thank God that God prepared a way for us over 2,000 years ago. He prepared a way for us that live in wisdom. I said to you earlier, I said that the fear of the Lord is not only the wrath of God, but it's also the reverence of God. If we have the reverence of God, if we have the respect for God, if we obey God and adore God, then our years will be multiplied and added and our days will be many and great. How do you know that, preacher? Because I believe the story. And the story is, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Christ gave his life for you and for me. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. I'm just talking about lengthy days. Over, over 2,000 years ago, Jesus took a tree. He marched up Golgotha's hill. He died between two thieves. Mean men killed him. He died on a skull hill called Calvary. I'm telling, I'm telling you that your days can be many if you just be wise enough to fear the Lord and believe the story. The story is, the record is written, the record is served, and the record is that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died at the hand of mean men on a skull hill called Calvary. Yes. They nailed him tight. They tapped him in well. They, they killed him on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus died that day stretched out between two thieves. He died on a skull hill called Calvary, stretched out between two thieves. So our days will be many. So our days will be great. So our years will be strong. He died on Calvary that day. I tell you, he died between two thieves. They pierced him in his side after he was dead. They pierced him in his side after he died on Calvary. Out came blood and water. That blood that ran down from the side of Jesus is, is blood that's cleansing us and our nasty souls. They took him off the cross, laid my Lord, my God, Jesus in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because it didn't need it that long. It, it was a borrowed tomb because the text declares that early that third day morning, Jesus Christ rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He was rising for our days to be long, for our days to be multiplied, for our years to be added to. He died and he rose again. He rose so early that the, the women didn't get a chance to anoint his body. He rose so early until Peter and John, when they got in the foot race, he was already gone from the tomb. He rose so early until the dew was yet on the ground. He rose so early until Pilate didn't get a chance to change the gods. He rose early that third day morning to make our days long and make our years strong. He got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. He rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus got up and caught a cloud and got out of here. 
He's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercessions for you and me. He's making intercession for you and me today when we mess up and then we confess our sins. He, he's making intercession for us. He's pleading our case. He's in the courtroom for us. He's our defense attorney. He's making his case for us. He's telling God, God, give him another chance. I died for him. He is pleading my case. He is pleading your case. He is sitting right next to the right hand of the Father. He's interceding for us, that our days will be long. Mm -hmm. And one of these days, the same Jesus that died on Calvary, the same Jesus they nailed to the cross, the same, same Jesus they lifted high and dropped low, the same Jesus they laid in a borrowed tomb, the same Jesus that woke up early that third day morning, got up with all power in his hand. The same Jesus is coming back again. Yes. The text declares in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that, that Jesus will come again. At the trump of God, he will get up and the dead in Christ will rise first and he will stop in midair and those of us who have this line to hope in Jesus shall meet him in midair so our days will be multiplied and our years will be long. That same Jesus will take us back to heaven with him and when he take us back to heaven with him there will be no more crying, no more dying, more, no more sicknesses, no more viruses, no more presidents, no more Congress. We won't have a need for the sun to shine over there because the S-O-N, the sun himself, will light up the entire city. Yes. That our days will be long. That our days will be great. Jesus died for us in rose, and he's coming back to get the saints of God. Those who've been converted, those who have given his life <laughs> to their lives to him. He's coming back to get you. Yes. We won't ride in a 747. We, we won't ride in a Lexus. We won't ride in a limousine. We're going to catch a cloud and catch Jesus and get on out of here. And we will forever be with the Lord. Yeah, we're, on the, we're going up yonder on the other side. We will forever be with the Lord and eternity will set in. Eternity, eternity is from now on. I'm telling you, if you walk in wisdom, if you trust Jesus as your savior, your days will be long, your days will be great, your days will be many, and your years will be strong. Because when we get to the other side, eternity is from now on. And we will forever be with the Lord. We can join in with the four beastly creatures around the throne of God, bowing down to the conquering king of Calvary. We will bow down and worship him. Yes. We will have one song to sing on the other side. And that is holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Our days will be multiplied. Yes. And our years will be strong and long. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Jesus says, come. Will you open your heart and come? I said to you that wisdom and principles are in the heart of a man. Say to you today, you need to give your heart to Jesus Christ. Trust him today that your days will be multiplied, that your years will be added. Proverbs 9, 10 and 11, go back and read it later. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you're going to be wise, if you're going to have good sense, you need to trust Jesus. You need to trust in the Lord. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't, don't, don't get it fixed up. You can't wait till you get it fixed up. You tried to fix it up. You can't fix it up. You need to trust Jesus. And he'll fix it for you. Just trust him right now. Believe the story. That Jesus died for your sins. That Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. 
and that Jesus rose early that third day morning. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, if you believe this story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you will be saved. You will be qualified to go to heaven. In the Colossian text, uh, Paul says that Jesus has qualified us. He has reserved a spot for you in heaven. And let me just tell you, you're going to die. You're going to leave here. And you want to go to heaven when you die. Heaven is a beautiful place. It is a place where there's no weeping, no wail in there. It's a place where you don't have to worry about people bad-mouthing you anymore. You don't have to worry about getting pink slips. You don't have to worry about lasting pain. You need to make sure that you trust Jesus. Will you join me now as I pray and invite Jesus into your life? The only thing I want you to do is just repeat after me and invite him in. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus I come. I believe Jesus is the son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe he rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, we thank God for those who have come to Christ and come to the knowledge of Christ right now. God says that the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one soul that has come to Christ. And we rejoice with the angels as you have come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you're here today and you don't have a church home or you're in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I want you to join by way of live broadcast. Hit me up. Uh, put in your, your message in Messenger. Uh, send me an inbox message. Let me know that you have chosen Jesus Christ church, New Beginning Church, as your church home. Foxes have holes, that's their home. Birds of the air have nests, that's their home. Every person needs a church home. We'll be glad to welcome you to the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the captain of the ship. So if you receive Christ as your Savior today, please, ma'am, please, sir, inbox me and let me know that you received Christ so we can rejoice together. And if you're looking for a church home, we recommend the New Beginning Church. We are broadcasting from a remote location now, but one of these days, we're looking forward to getting together again and celebrating Jesus the Christ as our Savior. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for being a part of this service. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord in tithes and offering. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give to the Lord. And you can do so, first of all, by, by Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Our cash tag is NBC Souls, dollar sign, NBC Souls, or you can do so by, by joining us in the mail, and you can mail it to, to uh, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. You can mail it to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can send by Zelle, you can send your offering by Zelle at lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. 
lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. We'll be glad to, to assist you with giving to the Lord and we'll be glad to have your support. And let me take this time to thank those who've been giving in, in these three ways. Thank you for supporting your church and thank our visitors for, for their offering as they've been giving also to the New Beginning Church. Please continue to meet us on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. every Sunday for Sunday School. And thank you for joining us and meet us here every Sunday morning at 1045 a.m. for Sunday worship service on Zoom as well as uh, Facebook Live. You can also join us on Wednesday night for our Bible study at 7.20 p.m. Wednesday night for our Bible study on Zoom and Facebook Live on Wednesday night at 7.20 p.m. Let me ask you to do something for me as we as we go back to the to the main screen. I want to ask you to do something for me. Uh, whatever you do, why don't you share this video? Share this video that we can reach souls for Jesus Christ. Share this video and videos to come and videos from the past. Share this video that somebody that you know will get to know Jesus. And whenever we start, whether we're in Bible study, Sunday school, or church service, I want you to start a watch party that everybody who's on your page will see what's going on at your church or see what's going on at the church service that you're attending. So I'm asking you to do those two things. After this broadcast is over, share this video. And every Sunday and every Wednesday as we come on the air, please start a watch party that other people can see what you are seeing and enjoying. I want to thank Sister Davis for keeping our praise team alive and well. Thank you so much for keeping our praise team alive and well while we're recording from this remote location. Thank you so much for being a blessing to our service and a blessing to the kingdom of God. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. God bless you and keep you. We're looking forward to celebrating Christ with you every Sunday and every Wednesday. Please send in your offering, your tithes, and bless the Lord at all times. We are the New Beginning Church. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. God bless you and keep you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We honor you, praise you. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We ask you, Father God, to continue to keep us in your care. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk healthy this week, that no virus will come near us, no accidents, no danger will come near our dwelling place. Bless us as we are in and out. Protect us, Lord, as only you can. That we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we thank you for wisdom. We thank you that wisdom is crying out in the street. We thank you that wisdom is crying out from every high place, from every mountaintop. We thank you that wisdom, Lord, is crying out in the courtroom. And wisdom, Lord, is crying out in every business. We pray that you bless us with wisdom. Bless us to operate in wisdom. And bless us to give by way of wisdom. Lord, we thank you now for this time together with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Thank you. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. <laughs>